Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's just get into a story today. I may have told this one before. I can't remember. You know, I had this girlfriend that uh, used to complain and tell me that I'm the kind of guy that'll tell every story twice. So if I've told this before, then I'm telling it again. I've had lots of interactions with gangs throughout my life. I'll tell you about when I lived in Santa Cruz, California in the early 1990s. Santa Cruz is an incredibly wealthy town and I've talked about it before in some of my videos, but they had a lot of gang activity there. I lived down in the Beach Flats Barrio, which is down by the boardwalk. The flats is separated into two halves. They got the crack side, they got the hooker side. It's all Mexican. I lived on the crack side closer to the boardwalk. And the crack side is where they sell all the dope at. They got crack, heroin, anything you want is gonna be on that side. And uh, it's incredibly violent. It's an open air drug market 24 hours a day. At least it used to be. Now, they may have gentrified that area. They may have cleaned it up. Um, I know that area still exists. I don't know the current state of Santa Cruz but we're talking 30 years ago. <laughs> I was in my mid-20s. Me and my best friend lived down there, little tiny apartment. We had a couple dogs. We just did the best we could. When we first got down there, being two white boys, the only white boys, there's no other white people down there, none. Just us. We didn't really get along. People weren't really accepting us in their turf. The Sereno's gang is the dominant gang on both sides of the flats. And above them is the Mexican Mafia. It wasn't until I got connected with the Mexican Mafia did the Sereno's start to accept me. Tolerate me living in their neighborhood, in their barrio. I mean, it's so tight-knit, it's like somebody were to come and live in your house. And you'd be like, who the fuck are you? I mean, every day, I felt like I had to prove myself. It was quite a relief to finally be accepted, and it was actually quite beautiful. I mean, I had never been a part of a community before, never in my life. I had never been a part of a, a neighborhood. I, I never knew what it was like to know your neighbors, to be friendly with your neighbors. That was new to me. I'd never had that experience before. People that truly uh, seemed to care about you. They'd help you out, give you a joint, feed you. It was like this mutual survival thing. One of the things I really enjoyed about the barrio was how clean it was. You know, you don't really think of ghettos. This is an extreme, extremely impoverished area. I mean, everybody's on welfare. Drug dealers and fucking gangs and shit everywhere. It's the most dangerous side of town. This is the side of town you avoid. You go ask anybody you've ever met that was from Santa Cruz. I guarantee you those motherfuckers weren't coming down to the flats. I don't care if there's some little Eminem wannabe tough guy that wants to be down with the hood. They weren't coming down to the fucking flats. Only two motherfuckers that were down in the flats that weren't Mexican were me and my homeboy. After about, I don't know, two years living down there, and I had finally gotten well-known in the area, and everybody on my block knew me, and it's a really crowded, dense area. It's kind of odd how the most dangerous part of town felt like the safest place for me to be. I don't know if anybody can relate to that, but I was so ingrained with the community that being in the worst, most dangerous place, I mean, these were my people. Maybe you have something to worry about, but I don't. I have so many stories about that neighborhood. I could make a hundred of them, a hundred videos of these fucking stories. Just being down there of shit that I've seen or been involved in. But after about a year of being down there, maybe two years or so, being down there, for the first time, there was like a turf war. See, the Serenios held down that area incredibly strong there's other mexican gangs that are enemy gangs especially up in santa cruz that's above the northern 
California, Southern you know, California is divided as Northern California, Southern California. Even though Santa Cruz is Central Coast, that's technically Northern California turf in the gang world. But they got a set of Southern California motherfuckers up there. The Serranos are Southerners, Southsiders. Mexican Mafia is Southern California. Nuestra Familia is Northern California. So it's all NF, and they've got this little fucking outpost of 13 that's in the middle of a fucking 14 turf. But it wasn't the NF motherfuckers that moved in on us. Oddly enough, it was the Crips. I had dealt with Crips down in Southern California once or twice before. Dealt drugs with them. Never really had a lot of experience with these guys. They're not organized like the Serenos are. You know how to tell the difference it really in the culture. It's the Sereno neighborhood, the Sereno barrio, at least this is my perception. You're not just joining a gang. You're not just a gangster. You're joining a military. And there's not a lot of option. You get drafted into it. If you're from the barrio, you have a certain obligation to be down for that area. Most people are involved in it in one capacity or the other, and it's highly organized with a hierarchical structure of leadership. And everybody has a role to play. And there's punishments and there's uh, rules, so many rules. The Crips, on the other hand, are not organized as tight. They're not organized like an army. These guys are gangsters. They're gangsters. And they fight between each other. And they sometimes don't operate all under the same rules. So there's kind of a difference in the culture of who you're dealing with. And the outside, you might just think, well, they're all gang members. It's, th there's a difference. The Crips are hanging out on the main drag and it's been so long I fucking haven't lived there in many years. I forget the name of the road, but it was the main drag going down towards the boardwalk. The Crips are, that's not the edge of the neighborhood. That's in the neighborhood, but they were claiming that corner. So they came into the neighborhood and claimed a corner in the neighborhood. It'd be different if they were claiming a corner on the edge on the other side, and they could say, well, that's y'all's spot, this is our spot, sure, we're right up on you, but we got everything from that block over, so get used to it. It wasn't like that. They came into the Sereno turf and started claiming a corner. That's kind of a big no-no. Every time I would walk by there, which was twice a day, because it was on the way to the convenience store that I used to go buy all my beer at, these motherfuckers were there, a whole crew of them. They switched out in shifts, but the Crips were there now. And they didn't know me. They didn't know that a white boy was down with the barrio. They just thought I was some kind of customer. The only white boys you ever see coming down to that area are customers. Motherfucker with his hand in his pocket, kind of looking for a fucking drug dealer so he can run up on him real quick and do a deal and get the fuck out of Dodge as fast as he can. That wasn't me. I'm practically gangbanging with these Serenos. I don't want to claim that shit. White people can claim it. I don't want to claim it because once you get into prison, you're under them. I'm not trying to go into the prison system taking orders from a Mexican, but... I started to get pretty intimidated by these guys, and there was no other way around the convenience store except to go by that corner. I'd go there strapped. I hate to have to risk that. It's California. It's not Texas. Walking around strapped in California is mandatory time just to go to the goddamn store. Everything I fucking set in place in motion of trying to become safe in the barrio and trying to establish my reputation and my name for myself, all that work for two years just seemed kind of fucking for nothing at that point. I hate being a grown man. You know, I was 25 years old, I'm not a small guy, working out all the time. Tough guy in the streets with a major reputation, all kinds of guns, reputation on both coasts. 
a, a family of criminals. My father's family have reputations as criminals. And I felt like, you know, I'm getting treated like I'm some kind of chump, man. I went to the uh, people I knew. Mentioned it to the Serranos that I knew, the street gang that are supposed to be soldiers on the streets. And they didn't really have much to say about it. A couple guys acted like they didn't really even know what I was talking about. And I'm like, go walk around the corner, I dare you. Go walk around the corner. I dare you to do it. In fact, I'll give you five bucks. I'll, I'll roll you a big fat joint and I'll only give it to you if you just do what I said. I just want you to see. See what I'm talking about. Motherfuckers are playing dumb on that whole shit. I was walking one day, I used to walk and talk with one of the Mexican mafia members. Not a Sereno. This guy is a bubble. Shot caller. Good buddy of mine. He's got Pedro. Pedro's cool as fuck. A little older than me. A lot more sophisticated. And I mentioned to Pedro, look, what the fuck is up with these crips, man? He was like, keep your fucking voice down. Don't talk about that shit. Just be cool. It's going to happen. Things like this take time. I mentioned it to him again one time. It was like a month later. And I'm just like, I thought you said some shit was going to happen. I mean, this is out of control. You're just going to let them take over your shit? I thought this was the whole game you motherfuckers play. It was turf, right? How much money did you used to make on that block? Now it's been three fucking months, and you haven't made a goddamn penny on that block. They've made that. What? I mean, how many thousands? You're not going to fucking stand up for your shit? I'm annoyed with these guys. I might have had a little more liberty to talk that way because I wasn't un under them. I'm just some white boy. Pedro just kept telling me the same thing. He'd just smile, just be like, ah, don't worry about it, man. Just don't, he's like, he told me, just don't pay him no mind. Don't even go to that store. He's like, I know you go to that store all the time to get your beer. Go to the other one. It's two blocks further, but you could use the exercise anyways. <laughs> one of the Crips started cruising back into the neighborhood on his beach cruiser, young boy. High school age he looked like, maybe 18, maybe just out of high school. Young looking guy. All cripped out. Blue, Raiders jacket. This guy, like he just fell out of a fucking music video. Just fell out of an NWA video. He's playing the role hard. Used to see him all the time riding his bike, this lone crip. You, you got to understand that these neighborhoods are segregated. You're not used to seeing people like that cruise up into the neighborhood. It's all Mexicans. Seeing two white boys is odd enough. Now you see this black guy? Stands out like a sore thumb and it really wasn't safe for him to do. It was a bold move for them to send that satellite up there and he's scoping out the scene throughout the barrio and you'd see him on every other block. See this motherfucker any time of day just cruising around. I used to hang on my front porch of my apartment building all the time and smoke joints with the homies. Even if they weren't there, I'd sit there and smoke a joint. This fucking crip, this kid, came up one day and hung out with me on the front porch and started smoking a joint. I was a little nervous. I'm hanging out with this guy that, you know, supposed to be the enemy. He seemed cool. He was a guy named Marcus. He was a cool kid. A few years younger than me. I was mid-20s. He was probably 18. And he looked young. He had baby face. And he was short. He would come by every day and we'd smoke a joint. This went on for like two months. Me and Marcus became friends. Those crips on the corner when I would walk by to get my beer, they became kind of cooler with me. Maybe Marcus said something to them. There's a white boy that lives up in there. Don't fuck with them. Or who knows? I don't know. But they, they, I would walk by and they would say what's up to me instead of being intimidating. Some of these guys were real big son of a bitches. Like Debo from that movie Friday. Big, big dudes, big bodybuilder dudes. So I was just kind of like, you know, this is just survival for me. I mean, I'm not part of you guys' street gang bullshit, so I'll make friends with anybody. It was New Year's Eve. I went downtown with my homeboy, my, with my roommate, my best friend, partner in crime. We had a great time that night. I met this chick down there, this chick, Danette. 
We started a relationship. That was the first night, New Year's Eve. I met that this chick, Danette. We had a little relationship for a while, girlfriend. And it was just a great night. You ever had one of these nights that's just an amazing night? You're just happy. You're just high on uh, how, what of a good time you had. So well, that's what it was. It was just a, a great New Year's Eve. Me and Jason were driving back. I was in my van. I used to have a, an, a cool van. And I'm driving back. We're cruising down the main drag. And I notice it's probably one o'clock in the morning, New Year's Eve. And I notice the fucking place is dead. It's a ghost town, silent. There's nobody anywhere. There's supposed to be 25 motherfuckers there, 30 guys there. This is open air drug market. I'm on the crack side. These guys have a duty, a, a job to do. They're working in shifts. If there's not a few guys in on every corner, in every little nook and cranny, the whole thing breaks down. I mean, there, there's rules. And, and these guys have to be out there. The only time they're not out there, the only time, the only time the streets were dead is when a murder happened. So we knew, we knew right away, instantly, a murder must have just happened because there was no cops on the block. We didn't hear them in the distance, the sirens coming yet. That murder must have just happened. Five, ten minutes, I mean, it, it must have just happened. Everybody scattered like fucking water bugs. We're pulling down the main drag and we see the body. Fucking laid out right on the sidewalk. Blood, a pool of blood, dark everywhere. Fucking body was steaming. Raiders jacket fucking logo pointed up. Motherfucker's face on the sidewalk pointed out towards the street. I pulled up real slow. Nobody around. I'm creeping two miles an hour, one mile an hour, trying to see who, if I recognize who it is. My heart sunk. It was that little homie Marcus. That little crip. He got killed. The Mexicans finally made their move and they shot one of the crips and the easiest target was that little fool that was cruising into the neighborhood. My heart sunk. It ruined the night. I was just like, man, not Marcus. It's just how the cookie crumbles. It's just politics in the streets. Thanks for watching.